Hello and welcome to Sunless Sea. If you were tuned in for the last one, but first, thank you for watching and choosing me to be your entertainer for the next 15 minutes. I appreciate that. But if you tuned in for the last one, you would know you were talking, oddly enough, to a rat and a guinea pig, both vying for our support. And what an interesting decision I have ever thought of. I never thought I would have to make. Who decide with the rat or the pig, guinea pig? And I have made my decision. As I feel, Lord, my Lord Jerry, came from the slums, came from the lower class, came from the destitute, it is only his duty to side with the rats. I sided with the chief engineer. He seemed grumpy, but honest. Also, I knew all too well what rat-made weapons can do. Indeed, we do, actually. Uh, we lost a crew member to one of them, if you do recall. They were a rat war, and they, and they killed my and they killed my man. Fixed the, fixed the ship. Nice and fine. Almost full. Not quite. But nice. I don't care for peace. Engineer. A friend to the rats. I extended a finger to the chief engineer, who shook it grimly. The initial hissed and chattered her teeth in disgust, but kept her distance. You've made the right choice, said the chief engineer. Let me show you around. An occurrence, your memories, your mem your memoir, yeah, <laughs> fucking goddamn words, your memoirs, a rat in the making. Quality is now one. You chose to help the rat. Choose, choose, choose to help the rats. I've gained one supply and one fuel. Thank you. I need more fuel. My God. Settle in for a story, ladies and gents. Here we go. The chief engineer led me to the northern side of the island, skirting with skirting the chicken woods. We passed through a number of what can only be termed checkpoints, as fierce-eyed rats shouldered their deringas and saluted the chief engineer. Soon, we came upon a small colony, smaller than some infestations I had encountered in London flats, perhaps only fifty rat and flabber altogether, working dil diligently to fortify their side of the island. The first thing I noticed was a brilliant light beaming out from a stump of chicken wood about six feet high. It bathed the whole settlement in a clean blue glow. It was almost too bright to look at. By its light I could see several raised mounds of earth suggesting shallow tunnels. An efficient fishing operation was set up by the water in albino rat mending nets while others stabbed sharpened sticks into the waves. Further inland was a barracks where a sergeant barked drills at a small squadron of fighters. My arrival drew attention, and several rats paused in the work and looked at, to look at me curiously. Welcome to Merninia, Mernini said the chief engineer, voice warm with pride. It's not much to look at now, but it will once we've roused the cavies. Take a stroll around while I summon the war council. With that, he vanished into one of the mounds and left me to explore. I visited the rat barrack. The rat barracks. The drill sergeant appeared to be sizing me up. We are a few. Were a few rats. Were the few rats around here really all she had to launch an attack? The chief. Oh, what? What? It, what? Where? Oh, Jesus Christ! That's the header. Almost read the whole thing twice. We were fighting impressive odds. I approached the drill sergeant, went so far as to salute her, which earned me a grunt of satisfaction. The sergeant dismissed her troops and offered me a bit of chickenwood jerky to gnaw on. There's more of us below ground, she explained, but not enough. The cavies are bigger, and there are more of them. Better with weapons, but we haven't got the stuff to make them with. Most of us came here as stowaways. Brought nothing but food and tools, and food, tools, and fur on our backs. We can fish, and we nibble the chicken woods. But we can't make guns out of trees. The cabbies came with their own steamer, and seem to have endless, seem to have endless supplies. We raid them sometimes, but there's so few of us, we can't hold on territory gain for long. 
This, but that's of no consequence. All we want is to be left in peace to build our republic. And the Rat Star, she added thoughtfully after a moment. Of course, we want that too. Took a closer look at the Rat Star. An excitable looking rat was peering at it through smoky goggles, twitching her whiskers and making notes on what appeared to be real paper. Blue is a sapphire, but endlessly more brilliant. It's not a star, of course, not really. But try explaining that to the others. The chief engineer doesn't want me to doesn't want me working too hard to convince them. This is better for morale. But just look at it. Look! She offered me her goggles. I managed to work them over just enough one of my eyes to see the truth of what she was studying. It was a skin tlac? It was a skin tlac, but unlike any I'd ever seen before. Blue is a sapphire, but more brilliant. Something about the clarity of its color was tremendously smoothing. The chief science officer tittered with pleasure as I handed her goggles back. Those of us who have been to the cavy side of the island and lived to tell of it said that there's plenty of glow there, plenty of lights in the water all around, but nothing like this. We took this from the island's center, Mount Ararat. Only it's not a mountain, of course. Any more than this is a star, it's hollow. There's sweet water inside and coral crawling all around all the walls of it. But nothing that glows save this. And now it's ours, and nobody can take it from us. Hmm. Let's head under the beach. Where the green billows bade. <laughs> Who ever heard of a rat mending a net? Now, Bino Rat smiled up for me from, from his mending work, looking danty and a little shy. Chickenwood flats floats, especially when it's dried out and sealed, so we're able to paddle out a bit and cast our nets. They come up with all sorts of things blind fish, crabs, and sometimes a chunk of broken tentacle. But the fishing would never be as good without the rat star, he beamed. I think it only draws good fish. He keeps the scary ones at bay. I know the chief science officer doesn't believe it, but I do. That light is our livelihood. I finished my exploration. That's interesting. I like the rats. Uh, I don't know about that. The bells of war. The bells of the war council rang. I was summoned. The chief engineer emerged from underground with a motley assortment of other rats. He introduced them as weapons experts, strategists, and field commanders. So you're going to help us beat the cavies, he said, a hard edge to his voice. But how exactly? <laughs> uh, nothing but my advice. Uh, offered my strategic assistance, a very modest challenge. 76. I determined to take the lead. Ah, I had a ship, I had cannons. We could steer her to the southern side of the island at most. I have no stuck challenge to use these original says. Oh, my dear. Now, are these choices mutually exclusive? Like, if I try one, I can't do the thing. Then I can't offer the ship because the ship's only got 37. But I don't know if that's an actual consideration. But that's that's iron. That's my iron quality. Right? And that's yeah. We're gonna do we're gonna do veils, cause that's all so we're about speed, stealth, and deception, just creases and stuff. So we'll do that one. Okay. I offered my strategic assistance. We've, we engineered a distraction that the LBs could use to plunder the cavy ship and turn the tide in their favor. A question a questing beast. I dressed up one of me sailors in a mess of shabby cloth smeared with prisoner's honey, and instructed him to roll around in the black earth of the island. Soon we had a glorious mud monster to send thrashing through the chicken woods toward ca towards the cavies. The distraction worked perfectly. The cavies diverted their forces toward the makeshift beast, leaving the rats with a very little opposition as they plundered the grounded ship. They returned triumphant, as did my sailor, laughing, having led the cavies a merry chase. Within a few hours, the rats' diligence had resulted in the building 
a remarkable cache of weapons with which they successfully routed their enemy. The rats, ever egalitarian, shared their spoils in addition to the promise of food and fuel. I've gained four bale parabola linen. Huh, I already have one of those apparently. Oh, right, 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 right. When I destroyed that pirate ship, I got one of them. An occurrence. Your Pigmont Isle spirit quality three conflicted. I know I'm pretty I'm pretty uh pro rat at this point. I wouldn't, I wouldn't really call that conflicted. Gain t oh my god ten fuel and a skintelac. Coral that moves in the moonlight makes my jewel of trip <laughs> or terribly expensive tea. Ah. Hail Marina two houses like it did not so much mind. You've succeeded in the Veil Challenge. The higher the quality, the higher the chance of success. I obviously succeeded. It said so. An occurrence, Pigmile Quality Civilization. Pigmile Isle Civilization quality is now 5. Unexceptional. An occurrence, quality is. Pigmile. Mike is now 4. Oh, vulnerable. Oh, wait. Wait a minute. Did I make these rats a force to be reckoned with? Despite being called vulnerable. Huh. Oh, oh. The house of Cavi has had fallen. Mernia was triumphant. And all that remained were the celebrations and the continuation of our voyage. Oh, how we feasted long into the night. Then, I interceded on behalf of the Cavies. They were crushed, defeated, and I could see the spirits broken without the light. The rest tried to guide them. They needed an advocate. Nope. The wide dark sea beckoned. We had eaten our fill, and our business had concluded. It was time to continue our voyage and see what others wanted such terrors to await us. Let's get a rat on the ship. I want a rat. After all, what's a ship without a few rats? The chief engineer couldn't leave his colony, but he relayed my request to his people. The albino rat I saw mending the nets. Nets shyly stepped forward. I'm good at fixing things, he said, earnestly, and I'd like to see more of the world. I waited for him to gather up his fix, say goodbye to his family before accepting him aboard. You've lost your position, there's trouble. I now have an albino tinkerer. And now. Fuck the cavies. We beckon. No longer hunger. A new nation has been founded. Nice. Now have Port Report, Pigmo Island. That's all for now. There. You finish your diary entry. And the final dregs of the rats. Surprisingly good wine. They line up to salute you as you leave the victory banquet, escorting you to your ship through the foundations of their new republic. And then I worry about other stuff, so. Where's the way we made this porn? Request repairs. The rats will board even a sinking ship. Sorry if my voice sounds weird. My foot fell asleep. Provided the crew is still willing to carry some of the heavier tools. Raise Pigmo Civilization for better prices. I mean, visit the Cavi Ghetto. Lucina has not been kind to its enemies. I don't care about them. Steal the wrist. Steal the red star. Oh no! No 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 no! You see? Oh god! Foot fell asleep so fast. Like I said, we're a friend to the rats, and that's how we will stay. But oh, it's gonna cost all the money to do this. Request repairs. We needed it. Oh. Shops. No shops here. Shipyard. Ain't nothing here. Veils. See, you do hearts. I want veils. You're a comatose fairy. You can't do anything anyway. A carpenter, a weaver, engineer's hand, a rat of all work. I put my chief engineer. I wanted a, I want a rat as my engineer. 
Uh, I already did this. And wow, time flew by. All right. So that was the tale of Pigmont Island. Now the Rat Republic. We helped make it happen. Maybe we'll be there. Maybe we'll return one day. But for now, this is the end of the episode. So, again, thank you for watching. I hope you had a great time. If you did, like and subscribe. It helps me out a lot. And have a good one.